So, gentlemen and ladies, uh, we, now we are toward the very, almost the end of the, this forum. Now we are moving to, uh, to the session four, which is brand evolution. And uh, for the you know, company, which has a very established brand image, or clear people expect, expectation, there is a tension between respecting brand and creating something new. So all three design directors talk about what they are uh, overcoming that uh, issues. And first, we have uh, uh, Mats Hashisan. He joined uh, Honda in 1990, and he has been worked for uh, many uh, successful products, which is like a CRV and City and so on. And now he became a, a Chief Officer of uh, Design Management of Honda R&D, uh, 2016. And now he's managing the whole global team for Honda and bringing back the spirit of Honda to the new generation. And uh, next, Malek, Malek Raheman. The, he is a design director and I think you are exec executive vice president as well of the company. And uh, he joined Aston Martin in 2005 as a design director of design. Uh, before, he worked for Rover and uh, BMW and Ford and Lincoln. And he was sent to Aston Martin in 2005. And last 12 years, he has done such a big, large number of new products. Most prolific period of Aston Martin. And including like a DB11, and Bankish, and very lately, Vulcan, right? So, and the last is uh, Anthony Villan. He, uh, he, he joined, sorry. He joined Renault in 1998. He has been in many fields and other bands and many areas. And he, 1912, he moved to the establishing new European department. And he established that not only design strategy and also brand identity and many things. And uh, of course, uh, the new car is just coming out. Yeah. The A110 is coming, you said, next month. OK, and the moderator is uh, uh, Tetsuya Kato-san. Uh, everybody knows he is a publisher and editorial director of Car Graphic Magazine, which is the most prestigious magazine in Japan. Kato-san. Hello, everyone. It's going to be the last uh, session. So some of you may be a little tired after long hours, but I hope that this session will be as interactive as possible so that we could adorn the wonderful day with the wonderful session. So Matsuzaki-san is going to be the first presenter. This is the last session, so I would like to be very active. Hello to all of you. I am from Honda Design Management. My name is Matsuhashi. Good afternoon to all of you. Well then, today's agenda item, so what I'm going to talk about was what I asked, and then it was about design and brand that I was asked to talk about. Kindly speaking, it troubled me initially. The reason is that Honda is a company that, as you know, first of all has four wheelers, and then bikes, and also power products. So these are power generators. Various products related to that is produced, and jet engines, and jet planes, and low ticks also recently. A lot of things have been produced. And that is what we call the one Honda. And we work on that accordingly. And that was in my mind. So I thought that, well, this may be rather difficult for me to cover for everything. But looking back, if you look at Honda from the design perspective, there are a lot of things to say. Originally, our company started from a town plant. Honda Spirit is a word that exists, but entrepreneurship and also the spirits to challenge and not to copy others is where Soichiro Honda started and motivated young engineers and designers got together to start this Honda company. 
And that initial portion from the design perspective will be focused on, and various other topics will be also explained. I am in the four-wheeler design management. Other than that, bikes and also power products respectively have directors who are responsible for each and talking about them means that it seems that something similar is already explained. As a matter of fact, Honda may be one company. Obviously that's so. So if you look into that in detail, Honda is a company that obviously is full of entrepreneurship, but we want to be contributing to people and be useful, but that's not enough. What else? Adding to that, is about something that is very comfortable and nice to feel. Nice to feel means that it can be interpreted in various ways. Looking at it, it makes you feel good, or touching it makes you feel good. Use it, and if it's good, in races, you feel good because you win. So that's what is experience, and the experience of the company to be reflected into design and something different from others, never to copy others. The same way of solution does not exist is the product at the basis on which we work on. That's our history. Today, in order to give my presentation, we first of all looked at various directors and including their stories, we made up an animation and the content of that basically is about Honda design, where it's not just styling. That's what I want to say, first and foremost. So what do we produce? It's incorporated into the movie. A happy time for the customers should be produced, and we will support that. And that is what we really focus on. It seems too beautified as a word, but if you see the animation, you'll be able to understand. In addition to that, from tomorrow on, in the Tokyo Motor Show, there will be an announcement of one sports EV concept and sketches of that and also the new experience to be proposed to the customer. New mobility image is also in this video, so please look at that. なんか、うん、なんか少し楽しいなとか、なんかいいことがありそうだなっていうふうに思ってもらえる。子供の頃から持てと生まれて幸せな時間を提供したいなっていうふうに思ってます。え、自動運転であるとか、そのいわゆるまあ、いわゆる言語で会話できる。音声認識の技術であるとか、まあ、AI であるとか、さらにま、電気で動くっていうことを考えていく
、うん、スーパースポーツでもクルーザーでも、うん、コミューターでもやっぱ人,人にすごい近い人がこうそれを見た時にああんかニコッとしちゃうというかねそういうのが本田らしさなのかなやっぱりそのもっとコンセプトもシンプルで見た瞬間に作り手がどういうメッセージを込めてどういう人たちにその商品を提供するかっていうのとそれがちゃんと形に出てるものそれがなんかホンダが進む道かなって。そのモビリティとのつながりとかを利用することによってうちならではのパワープロダクトの製品の使い方の提案であったり新しい製品だったりとかが出せるうちの強みがあると思うんでその辺を生かしながら一言で簡単に言うと使いたくなるようなデザインっていうのを考えてるんですね。その特にモーターサイクルとかオートモービルの間を接着剤のようにつなげていくのがパワープロダクトの役目かなお客様の幸せな人生の時間をデザインするそういうふうに考えるところがホンダの、えー、解決のところなんじゃないかなっていうふうに思いますね。Hi. Thank you very much. Firstly, start your engine gave a big sound. And lastly, it seemed like an animation or a happy family's picture was what ended this animation. New brand will be explained. And what Honda needs to challenge at all times is about some new experience to be experienced. Sometimes it was repeated where, and I tell my designers often that the designer's job is to draw pictures and to cut mo models, but there's more to that. Designers need to look at people they love or people around themselves should be made happy, and that's what the designers should do. If they can't do that, what can they do? Is what I always talk to my designers about. For example, EV. Was explained within the animation. That also is in the area of sports where there is a lot of dynamics, and I don't need to touch so much on that. Properly driven and go around and enjoyable car, that's a spirit that Honda cannot give away. On the other hand, in the future, the four wheeler should be more transcended. More experience is the area where Honda always should propose something new. One of such is Honda's design, where 
For example, chassis is determined, engine is determined, package is also concluded. And then what about outside? Designers look at it. We don't work in that way. In Honda, the first portion, you look at the goal, and then you go back from that. This is the happy picture, be it in sports and families and always also the outdoor. And what is necessary for that, what kind of styling is necessary, can be proposed on the framework level. Such organization, such a proposal is what we value. It means that in the future and in tomorrow's Tokyo Motor Show, in the Honda booth, it's existing, and Honda Connected Lab also introduces something that may not necessarily look like a car. Including that area, various proposals are given by Honda. So by talking about this, it seems as though Honda is becoming more milder. Maybe some think so. But NSX is NSX. Light trucks are light trucks. Super Cubs are Super Cubs. And CVRs are CVRs. In each of the field and each of the competitive fields, they need to win, be it by design, engineering, etc. So in that sense, we do not need to loosen our pe pedal pushing. So from that perspective, in the design area, two, be it four or two wheelers or power products and robotics. And as a matter of fact, I also slightly designed the robots. And including those areas, the design should come together so that new Honda's value can be offered. That is in our aspiration. Design itself, obviously, for new things and what to be challenged. And that is the area that we do not need to loosen our reins at all. So please have expectations towards us. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Hashi. Honda multifaceted faces will move on forward. Thank you. Next. The UK's Aston Martin Design Director, Malek Fleischmann, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to try and keep you awake as well. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a presentation, so it's just you're just going to get me, um, which is unusual for me. But um, 15 minutes to present something visually is um, not enough time, so I'm just going to talk at you, and I'm going to I'm going to ask some questions as well. Profound question about brand and a designer. Whose responsibility is the brand? How do you affect the brand as a designer, and what is your role for the brand as a designer? And who's better, the designer or the brand? So 12 years at Aston Martin. It's one of the most traditional companies in the world. It's 104 years old. So it sits there with Mercedes and Ford as the oldest car companies in the world, Peugeot. We have changed dramatically over 104 years. But in 104 years, we've made 80,000 cars. That's two days of production for Toyota. <laughs> so if you think about it, what profound effect can you have on a company, therefore? So I've been there for more than a tenth of the company's existence. And in that period, we've produced more than half of those 80,000 cars. And if you take out the pre-war cars, the cars that were made in handfuls, and the 70s and 60s cars, or post late 60s cars that were made in handfuls, the percentage of time from 12 years and cars is quite dramatic. So you can, as a designer, have a profound effect on a brand. But it's your responsibility to be a guardian of the brand as well. Because it's not about creating Marek Reichmann's, it's about creating Aston Martin's. So what is my philosophy? First of all, and as Shira mentioned, I have worked for many brands. Rover, Land Rover, BMW's ownership of Land Rover and Rolls-Royce, Lincoln, Mercury, and then finally Aston Martin. All of them brands with very, very strong identities. 
And what you're doing as a designer is continuing that identity. It's making sure the identity of the company, the brand, exists way after you're not there. I don't intend to be around for another 104 years, but the company will be. And therefore, you have a plan to make the company exist through that time. So right now, as a company, we're entering our second century. In, flat, in fact, our plan is called the second century plan. And when I arrived at Aston Martin 12 years ago, there were six people, including myself. And we had a rented space in the Land Rover studio that Massimo works in now. We had a tiny corner. And we created all the product on one plate with six people. We're just about to enter an area of growth that is incredible for the brand. We'll have about 160 people at the end of next week. We'll have our second studio opening on the Red Bull facility in the first quarter of next year. We're opening, opening a brand center here in Tokyo, and we'll have a small kind of outshoot in, in Tokyo to just look at the Japanese market. So how have we grown in, in 12 years? We've grown exponentially, and the product has also grown way beyond the pl proliferation that, that was mentioned earlier. The second century means we replace all of the products within six years. So it took almost 12 years to replace DB9 with DB11. So that's one new product. And if you, if you say old Vantage was a derivative, really, that's two new products in 12 years. We're about to enter a phase of second century where we're doing seven new products in six years. First was DB11, and it has derivatives. It has a V8 and a Volante. At the end of next month is New Vantage, which looks nothing like DB11, and I'll talk about that after I've mentioned all the cars. Then comes New Vanquish. Then comes Aston Martin's first SUV, 2019-20. Then comes our first mid-engine car. So if you imagine what Valkyrie is now, push Valkyrie downstream. We have a competitor to a 488. That's an on-road series product. And then we have two Lagondas. And the Lagondas will be very, very different to the Lagondas that you know today and of the past. So it's not just one brand either. It's two brands. It's Aston Martin Lagonda. And that's the expansion that we're going through. Getting to know the customer and understanding the brand from the customer's perspective is really, really important. You can have your own view as a designer of what brand is, what the brand stands for. You can look back in history. You look at shape, form, material. You try and understand what makes an Aston Martin an Aston Martin. In doing that, we as a company came to the conclusion that Aston Martin stood for beautiful. Because the first thing that someone says to you, they don't mention horsepower. They don't mention 0 to 60. They don't mention the suspension system. They don't mention the engineering. They say, wow, it looks beautiful. So what does Aston Martin stand for? It stands for beauty. And you all know that beauty is at the core of proportion. Therefore, in our structure, I sit as executive vice president reporting directly to the CEO. My CTO, so the engineering equivalent, is my partner. There's no reporting structure there. That's a, a matrix report role because the fundamentals of design are based on proportion. Proportion gives you beauty. You can clothe it in something, but without the basic core proportion, you don't have beauty. So if you stand for beauty, you have to generate and be there at the creation of proportion, the creation of where does the engine sit versus the occupant, how wide is the track, what's the relationship between the front wheel and the windscreen. That's the basic language of design within Aston Martin. So we, we don't talk about making customers happy. We talk about making customers feel wow. And happy is one stage, but wow and saying this looks beautiful is, is another factor. And every single Aston Martin customer has to come and say, wow, I love it, versus the, the last product. But that product has to last as well. So you're always in this constant dilemma of, the here and now and the future. And if you're creating beauty now, will it be beautiful in 50 years' time? Of course, because beauty transcends time. 
So if your proportion is right, if the beauty is right, it will be beautiful in 25 years' time, just like a DB5 is beautiful today. And there are examples where we got it wrong. There are periods in the history where we were just kind of putting shapes over existing proportions, putting shapes and forms over things that belong to someone else in a way. And I guess the biggest growth of the company came from 2000 to today. Under the stewardship of Ford, that was a very, very important part of setting up the modern day Aston Martin because every small company needs a parent at some point because it's very difficult to exist in a marketplace amongst giants and you need the support of a giant to help you purchase, to help you in your supply chain, to help you with resource sometimes. We're independent now since 07, but we have a 5% shareholding from Mercedes. So we have a parent again, if you like. We have access to certain technologies. And a, and a company our size right now can't spend 2 billion euros investing in an electrical architecture system that the customer never even touches, feels, or sees. It's just a bunch of electrons running around, along a wire. So it's important to know what your focus is, to know what your IP is, and where to set your stall, as it were. And beauty is for Aston Martin, as you would expect, because I'm sure all of you look at a DB5 or a DB4 GT and say, wow, it's beautiful. But you can't be tied to the past. And if you're in our studio today, you'll, you would see that there are no images of other car brands. There are no images of old Aston Martins up. It's all about a future perspective based on beauty. So what is beauty and how do we attain beauty in the future? Based around the core principles of an Aston Martin, it's a sports car. Therefore, it's lighter in weight. Therefore, it uses materials that don't give excess. You know, should I mention that a DB11 is 400 kilos lighter than a Bentley? Maybe, but it is because it's based on a sports car. That platform goes racing. We're currently Le Mans champions in GTE. We race against Ferrari, against Porsche, against, in the future, BMW, against Corvette, against Ford, because the, the company is a sports car manufacturer, and that's also important. So it's making sports cars that are beautiful. So that means when I go into a, a presentation with a board, I don't have to fight for beauty. I don't have to fight for the right wheel and tire size. I have to look at my budgets, but the company understands that proportion and how we attain beauty is important. It's left to the designer. But as I said, it's the designer's role to protect what the brand stands for, and that's very important, which is why the grill will always carry the inflection at the top of the grill. Even if you look at Valkyrie, so is Valkyrie an Aston Martin? Yes, of course it is. It's 150 cars that are very expensive. They'll only ever be 150. They're V12 engines, they're naturally aspirated, and they're built in partnership and designed in partnership with an F1 team, with Red Bull Racing. And that's a very, very big shift and change for Aston Martin as well. But it's still beautiful, it's still unusual, it still pushes the boundaries, which is really, really important for the company as well. And if you think of an Aston Martin as a GT product, that's the relatively obvious part of Aston Martin. But what does an SUV and what does a mid-engine car look like? There were the big challenges in our second century growth. But if you know that beauty is important to who you are, then you can make that change. New Vantage doesn't look anything like DB11. And when you see it, you'll see that that's the case. Why? Because in our last period of growth, from 2000 to, let's call it 2010, 2011, maybe a little bit later, it was about re-establishing the brand with its own factory, with its own architecture, not shared within the Ford manufacturer. It was our own. We developed our own. But those cars had similarities because we were growing and we had to take the efficiencies. Now, in this period of growth, Vantage looks completely different to DB11 because we've talked to those customers. We've talked to the customers. And when you have less than 7,000 customers a year at peak, you can actually go and talk to most of your customer base. I travel the world to events, and I meet lots and lots of our customers. 
and you get direct feedback. I like this, I don't like that, I think this is good, but it's always a wow. So how do you separate then DB11 from Vantage, from Vanquish, from an SUV? That bit's easy. The SUV is going to have a different form factor. It's a different shape, if you like. But how do you separate Vantage from DB11? And that's then about finding your proxy customer. Who, who are you pinpointing as your customer within the brand? But always reflecting on beauty and the fact that it's a sports car. So it's about protecting the brand. It's about evolving the brand. It's about growing the brand, but maintaining its values, not as a Marek Reichman, but as an Aston Martin. Once you understand what your core value is, protecting the brand, making sure the brand exists for another 100 years is important. So the question, again, your custodians of brands, your custodians of marks that have existed, whether it's new and you're reinventing or you're reinventing, it's important that you set your stall out and don't stop fighting for what you believe is right for the brand. So hope that kept you awake and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marek. And she joined. Thank you very much. You didn't need any video animations. It was a very strong and clear message that was communicating to all of us. Different from Aston Martin, soon there will be on the road the Alpino HB Anthony William. Please come up. À la fin du parcours commun, Andrew est en tête avec 1 minute 44 secondes d'avance sur Anderson. On considère à juste titre que le vainqueur au Maroc est un champion du monde en puissance. Darnish le sait et il remporte les cinq premières épreuves spéciales, dont quatre devant Terrier. Dans cet enfer du Sud, la suspension, les freins, la boîte de vitesse, l'embrayage, le circuit de refroidissement, la direction des Renault 12 ou 16 qui équipaient les Alpines ont tenu. Et ce n'est pas le moindre aspect de cette éclatante victoire. Le Tour de Corse allait prendre fin après 10 rallyes internationaux, 346 épreuves chronométrées et 29 621 km de course sur le triomphe des Alpines Renault. That's a really funky sequence. I, I love it all. I think it's important to, to start with this sequence because um, I think that's Alpine. I was not even born when, uh, when these uh, images were shot, but uh, I think that's what stay in the mind uh, of most of the enthusiasts. So um, I'm Anthony Villa. I'm in charge of Design Alpine since five years now, since the beginning of this fantastic journey. And I will start with a, a bit of history about Alpine. And, uh, and first, the name. Um, Jean Redelet, the Alpine founder, has chosen that name because it was representing the, the pleasure of driving on mountainous roads. Um, we think that it's really strong and really aspirational. Um, it's also a symbol, and, and Alpine is probably the only brand whose name evokes uh, its playground. And for us, it's really important. Alpine was created in 1955 by uh, Jean Redelet. Uh, the foundation uh, of the brand are still valid today and derived directly from the Alpine Cups uh, he won in 1954. He was a visionary man, uh, a passionate man, an enthusiast. And, um, and uh, we have uh, as an emblem uh, the A with the, the arrow. And it's really strong, really iconic. It, it was designed in the, in the 60s, but we decided to keep it as it is. Really strong. Uh, uh, core. So we cannot talk about Alpine without talking about the city of Dieppe. Uh, this is the historic factory and it's still operational. Uh, this factory has never stopped to build a sports car uh, for Alpine, of course, but uh, after for later for uh, Renault Sports. And the savoir-faire, the know-how of this structure is perfectly adapted for a small series of sports cars. In total, more than 30,000 sports cars were sold under Alpine name, 
for, for 1,100 of which were manufacturers under licenses uh, in Mexico, Brazil, uh, Bulgaria, and Spain. The iconic vehicle of the brand is, of course, this, uh, this famous A110 Berlinet, whose timeless design is still uh, relevant today. And this car is concentrating into its compact size uh, all the DNA of the brand. And the, the DNA, beside competition, is based on lightness, agility, and driving pleasure. That's really important. And this Berlinet won the first World Rally Championship in 1973 and had several uh, triples at the Rally in Monte Carlo, had uh, bigger and more powerful cars. And its agility, thanks to lightness, was its signature, as you can see on such a quite crazy image. And um, 1973 uh, is also the year where Alpine, uh, Renault, uh, where Renault has finally bought uh, Alpine. Alpine won numerous uh, motorsport titles uh, in many uh, disciplines, including F2, F3, and endurance, notably the 1978-24 Le Mans, and with the A442B uh, after an epic battle against Porsche. Between 1955 and 1995, um, Alpine has created some unique race cars and road cars. And this is a fantastic heritage. Uh, for us, of course, we are talking about shapes, but we are also talking about uh, graphics from ra the racing. So very strong for us. Unfortunately, the production stopped in 1995. Um, Alpine uh, then fell asleep during 20 uh, long years. Hopefully, thanks to uh, several clubs and fans, uh, Alpine has continued to live and even to expand uh, its footprints uh, reaching some countries where Alpine has never been sold, such as Australia, North America, and of course here in Japan, we have a lot of fans and clubs. Um, the association of uh, Alpine Ancient has done a fantastic job during that period, and I want to thank them again because they have shared with us uh, their passion and their dedication for, for the brand. So today, Alpine has four strong historic pillars. The first one is a man, Jean Redele, and a very specific team spirit. We have, of course, the, 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 our factory, the cradle of the brand in Dieppe, and its uh, know-how, its savoir-faire. We have the iconic A110 and its uh, legendary agility. And we have a palmarès, including World Rally Championship in 73 and 24-hour Le Mans in 78. Today, we have decided to reboot the brand on the same pillars, and that's key. It's really important, and we have a chance to do, the, to do so. So this uh, human adventure is organized around a business unit uh, composed of uh, enthusiasts. Our car is manufactured in the historic factory in Dieppe. Our new A110 is designed from the same DNA uh, than the Berlinet from the 60s. And we have a strong engagement since uh, 2013 uh, in uh, endurance P2 class with already two European titles, one world title and one 24-hour uh, Le Mans victory last year. So that's key and that's really important. Let's move now to uh, today's brand platform and design strategy. The brand platform is very simple. On one side, we have um, the brand personality, how we speak and act, and it's about elegance with hedge, genuine alternative, and passionate. And on the other side, what we do better, uh, the brand differentiators, and it's about absolute agility, feel at one, and sensual machine. In line with this uh, brand platform, uh, we have imagined a design strategy. This is a very simple tool uh, based on three fields of inspiration. The first one is uh, our playground, the Alps, and we are using the word pure and iconic. And it's about shapes, it's about graphics codes, it's about even the attitude of, uh, of a skier curving in the snow. Um, it's about also some uh, colors like uh, uh, blue and white. Um, so that's the first uh, field. The second one is more related to uh, human values, and we are using uh, elegant and sensual, and um, this is 
uh, we are talking about the handmade in France product uh, with refinement and savoir-faire. Uh, this is our heritage, our soul, our heart. And um, this is a gentleman driver attitude and we are using more warm color in this field. The third one is related to machine. And it's uh, sharp and lightweight. Uh, here it's a form follow function. Uh, we are highlighting technical choices. It's about showing the structure, choosing lightweight materials, and this is the field of performance racing, uh, but we're also using uh, inspiration for aircraft. Um, so this is a simple tool, and now I will show you uh, some uh, usage of this, of this tool. We have um, a complementary tool to go a bit deep into uh, the day-to-day -day work um, because we believe that emotion is coming from contrast and tensions, and we are assuming that Coexistence of opposition is the source of emotion. So we are playing all the time with heritage and modernity, warm and cold, sensual and mechanic, curve and sharp, refined and raw, solid and light. So this is a tool more really adapted to designer for their day-to-day -day work. What is interesting is uh, that we are not using the, this uh, strategy only to do the cars. We are doing everything customers can see or touch. And that's pretty exciting uh, for a design team to be able to create a 360 degree experience. Um, so I will show more example uh, later. I will start with, uh, with now the, the application of this strategy on the design of the new A110. And first, pure and iconic, the car is structured uh, on the side view uh, on one line. No oversized air intake, no spoilers, thanks to heavy work on uh, aerodynamics. And we are applying some uh, iconic uh, features. And so that's signing the car with a lighting signature with the four uh, uh, rings, uh, the side sculpture and the curved rear glass, uh, the low rear end combined with the extended wheel arches confer unique stance. Um, so th that makes the first, uh, the, the first uh, field. Elegant and sensual uh, is coming from rounder and softer shapes. And in the interior, uh, we have some uh, refinement on the details. And they are playing with the warmth of the kilted leather. Um, and this is inspired by the car from the 60s. And for instance, the digital cluster is reminding the iconic uh, Berlinette from, uh, from the 60s. And, this is also a timeless uh, design approach we are looking for. The third field is about sharp uh, and lightweight. And once again, it's more graphic and technique. We are highlighting uh, technical choices, uh, showing the aluminum structure. We have a dedicated platform. We are talking about that uh, just before we had Aston Martin. And we are designing the parts by removing materials uh, in inst instead of adding it. And it's a form follow function uh, approach inspired by, by aircraft and, and racing cars. So I will give you another um, translation of the design strategy into a uh, color and trim strategy. And the Harps has inspired us uh, fresh colors such as the whites and the blues. It's also inspiration for materials such as ceramics for the snow, glass for uh, for the eyes and, and this kind of work. Uh, the second field is about warm color with a palette of brown and blacks uh, with warm materials such as leather, uh, wood, felt. Uh, modernity is coming from the touch of tonic blue we are adding and it's enhanced the overall picture. And the third field, we are playing with the gray scale uh, and a touch of tonic orange. Um, this is a territory of uh, technical and lightweight materials, uh, such as aluminum and carbon. And we have uh, created an extension of, uh, of this uh, field dedicated to racing. And for racing, we are using the iconic blue with a tonic orange, and this is what we are doing on deliveries for our, on, on our race cars, for, for instance. So that's another translation. And um, we have also a declination of the design strategy for graphic and photographic uh, ingredient. And the mountains uh, road is one of them. Uh, the blue color, the iconic blue. Um, we have also the slants, 
that we are using a lot uh, on a graphic uh, work, and it's uh, directly following the, our emblem, the A. The third field, we call it the charm from imperfections, and uh, it's related to human. So we are using um, the handwriting, uh, the drawing, the texture, and, and there is life and soul in these codes. And the third section, in opposition, is linked to technology. And graphic codes are more about uh, wireframe, blueprint, and we are also, this is also the territory of, uh, of uh, structures. So another declination, and uh, a good example um, is our showroom, which is a uh, design uh, following the color and trim and the, and the color, and, color and trim strategy and the graphic codes. So in each showroom, we'll have an immersive background uh, with a panorama of the, of the Alps. Uh, we'll have a space dedicated for enthusiasts with a library, with a cozy lounge, with warm materials such as uh, felled and wood. Um, We'll have a shop to uh, purchase uh, luggage and merchandising, and we'll display classic car. And, and this is our first showroom. It's already open in, in Boulogne, near Paris. Um, and we will open 60 more showrooms in Europe uh, by the end of the year, and Japan will follow uh, beginning of 2018. So in terms of photography, very quickly, but the same thing, we are playing with the car in its playgrounds. In the Alp, uh, we have some close-up to highlight uh, refinement in the inter interiors, the choice of the materials, the, the, um, the details. And, and for technical parts, we are shooting the part, the aluminum, directly on the floor of the, of the plant, on the factory plant. We are using the plant to, to, to take the picture, to really show what is the, the soul of this uh, technology. Uh, very quickly, I'm coming back to the emblem, but even the emblem is, is really fully matching this, uh, this uh, graphic strategy. So it's iconic and pure, it's timeless, historic, and sharp and agile. So we are really uh, diving into uh, this strategy uh, very deep to, uh, to give life. Another way to play with this triangle is by always mixing code of modernity, heritage, and racing, and that gives this kind of uh, family portrait, and I, I think that's quite unique and strong. Our digital platform is probably our preferred graphic playgrounds, so I'm inviting you to, to visit alpinecars.com. Uh, we're having a lot of fun by mixing all the codes. You will see the mountains, the graphics, the slants, the end writing, the wireframes, uh, mixing heritage, racing, and modernity. So very useful because we, uh, we had to bring awareness of the brand before the product. So it was a great tool. And we are still uh, stretching this idea further because we have uh, decided to, uh, to, uh, to put the ordering process into the same uh, mindset. And um, uh, the ordering process is made through uh, an app on your phone. And uh, without showing the definitive car, uh, the 1,955 premier edition has been sold out in only four days. So we are very, quite proud of like, that, about, about that, that result. But uh, that shows the strength of, the, of, of, this, uh, of this work. So this was the, the design strategy. Um, now I would like just to, to, um, to share with you a few experiences we had um, during the development. It's more to, to show the hands-on approach of our work. So we are always playing with, with these different uh, fields, and, and I will just focus on history and racing. And for inspiration, early in the process in 2012, uh, we have organized a creative workshop uh, within the family's Redele collection. This is a unique collection. There are about 30 cars, um, almost all the models created by the brand. And we had a chance to spend time there uh, to touch, to smell, to hear uh, all these fantastic machines. And um, we have sketched them on sketchbooks, small dimension. But we have already done, we have done also some uh, full scale uh, sketches with, uh, with um, brushes. And, and all these exercises were executed in 30 seconds, one minute. And this idea was to catch the Alpine styling DNA, uh, to catch the character lines, the materials, and the graphics. And 
this work was fundamental for us um, to inspire all the work that has been done during the, the, last, um, during the last five years. In parallel, uh, we have a chance to work since uh, 2013 with uh, our racing team. And uh, we are experiencing a lot of things with them. We are sharing time in their uh, workshop in Bourges. We are doing the delivery of the racing cars. We are sharing mindset with the engineers, mechanics, and, and drivers. Um, and we are even spending time during the races in the paddock with them uh, at 24 Le Mans, for instance. And this is a very strong live experience. And that's really important for us. On the assessment side, uh, we have created uh, an advisory board. And uh, it's composed from uh, former engineers, uh, pilots, distributors, and the son of Jean Redelet. And every year during, uh, we, we, we had, uh, during the development, invited them to give us their opinion and advice on, on the project. And it was a strong, um, makes a strong li link with them. It's a rich and very instructive experience. I'm coming back, sorry. In parallel uh, and in balance, we have invited uh, our racing team as well. It's much a younger uh, audience, uh, but they are all uh, talented drivers and engineers, um, enthusiasts, and they are probably some of our future uh, customers. And finally, this is the spirit of Alpine. Uh, it's several generations um, sharing the same ambition and the same passion for this unique brand. And as I mentioned already, this is a, a human adventure. It's more than a project. So I would like to thank the member of my design team for their talent and dedication. This is a small team, but well, just it was a fantastic uh, journey. And I will just end with a little movie just uh, as a synthesis. La victoire de l'Alpine Renault 1600 S confirme son titre de meilleure routière du monde. Long, sorry. Thank you very much, Anthony. It's very interesting. Mark. I listened to your speeches in a recent designer's workload. I couldn't help thinking of <laughs> graphic. They really do care details such as graphics so that they could maximize the brand power, which we really appreciate your efforts. Well, first of all, I would like to ask you Matsuzaki-san question. I still much in Alpini. The design heritage is very much respected and paying respect to those will lead them to future. But Honda, Japanese manufacturers, encounters it. Sometimes you, you reject or negate the past 
to make something new. And what is your opinion about the role of design? For example, recently we announced in Frankfurt urban living concept, the new concept. Compared with the Honda's commercial cars, the new EV concept is so different. But we didn't think that was the, that was the topic of motif. In terms of the direction of the future direction of design, we would like to seek after simplicity. In other words, the essence. When we pursue the essence, what is going to be left? We would like to see once again so that we could um, express that. And thereby, I think we, could, we become able to make something new. And that the cars of uh, Honda that we developed, are they going to be similar to them? Or how? Well, I don't think it really matters. Well, Honda matters is that don't mimic what's been done. Make new ways of making things. So that's our focus. That's the root of our the Honda's ideas as well as designs. For example, no should be low, the big windows. There used to be some cars with those features. In recent years, many things evolved, and there are th rules and regulations that we have to follow. However, the, what is the fundamental of Honda? Forum? Styling? No, we don't care much about them. But succeeding old models, we don't much care about it. Rather, we continue challenge ourselves. That, I think, lies in the spirit of Honda. In other words, the consistency of design, you don't care very much about it. Right. As I said earlier, the small truck, mini truck, NSX, the wide range of products we produce, and uh, say, the something symbolic, um, um, the, the design, Sometimes we are asked, what is the symbolic design of Honda? But the rather, the, what Honda really focuses on is the diversity, the variety. And respecting that attribute, we try to pursue the future direction. So we do not very really care much about the consistency. That was uh, a little unexpected answer, say the Franklin urban EV concept that you announced, I felt that that's something that you came back or returned to Civic. So that reminded me of a sort of heritage of a Honda. So DNA of design is to be inherited. That was the new direction that I thought Honda has taken. That was not the case, no. The new, uh, excuse me, the first generation Civic may be inspiring to some people, but like they look similar to boys racers, the different interpretations people can have. And I think that is good. The first generation Civic, the essence pursued, and then the answer we found was quite simple. And that is the kind of thing that we would like to return to. If I make one comment saying, when we make that car, the, we had the slogan among the design teams. The old uh, the car's heritage was not in there. That was a robot, moving robot in the form of a car. So that is the slogan. You know, we were um, calling each other among the design team to make the first Civic. So it's a car, but it's not a car. Functionally, it's like a robot. So when, what is the robot? This is feel close, as if you're a friend, and as if it's something that you can rely on when you're in trouble. And there's some kind of feelings that you can in, uh, incorporate into a car, but the something character, or say legendary things that the robot may have, and can we have that incorporated in a car? That was the challenge that we really did say, Aston Martin, Front Mart, Coupe style, 
uh, had a great success in many cases, and made the engines will be developed, SUV, new challenges will continue into the future, design and forming. But Aston Martin, something like Aston Martin, I'm sure you have that answer in the future as well. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm out of a job. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I think as I try to explain, if, if you, and it's very different. So if Honda's core attribute is to be different, is to challenge every time, is to ch challenge the norm, is to always change, our value is to always be beautiful. And you cherish the heritage, but you move that forward. So is it difficult to do an SUV? It's just different. Yeah, completely. Different. And it's, it's completely different, but if you say, what is your SUV, what's our SUV? It's not a Land Rover, that's for sure. It's, it's an Aston Martin. What's an Aston Martin? It's beautiful, in our context of beautiful. It's light in weight. It's therefore has an agile feel. It's not about excess. It's not necessarily about practicality, although it has to be practical because it sits in a world of practicality, SUV, utility sits in the title. But sports also sits in the title. So it is challenging, but without the challenge, why, why be a designer? And it's a great challenge to have, and, I, and well, I'm pretty sure when you see it, you'll like it. So that's, that's a good, good sign. Mid-engine is, is also very different, because it doesn't have a classic proportion of a GT. So how do you get the elegance, that relationship that you have, the beautiful essence of, of a mid-engine car? It, and if you look at Valkyrie, it's a very, very different product to, say, Project One from Mercedes. It has a very different aesthetic. And it finds its beauty from engineering. And it finds its beauty from the very small surfaces that have to exist because the car is so light. It's a 1,000 kilo car. So it's 1,000 horsepower and 1,000 kilos. So it's a very, very light car. So its aesthetic is coming, it's beauty again, but beautiful engineering, beautiful proportion, a beautiful solution. So beauty always sits at the core. I see. Anthony, are you of the same opinion? Uh, we are talking about that because we are probably with Alpine at a stage early in the process earlier, and I, I, I wish I will have the same kind of, uh, of challenge to face uh, within a, a few years. For the moment, we are introducing our first car. So we are at a stage where we have to make the link with the past because we, we, we have disappeared during 20 years. We have also a specific challenge regarding um, um, the brand because in France, it's an icon. It's really well known. But when you go out from France, starting to be not, not that obvious. And it, when you go out of Europe, you are known. So you have to explain where uh, your roots, your DNA. Um, you have to stick to, um, to the, your roots. That means same thing, proportions, um, very nice engineering. Uh, oh, we are talking about agility. That's really uh, our core. This is, uh, this is something very strong. It's not about power. It's really about agility through lightness. So I guess we can explore a lot of different, different ways to, to do it. It can be through, uh, we have done some um, very interesting exercise through uh, the Alpine Vision Gran Turismo. It was also very playful. And we are using the same tool to do the cars. Uh, but that shows that you can, you, you can spread your, your, your um, styling DNA into different concepts. And, and after first, we have our first car. We have our iconic car to, to, uh, to explain. And I think after, the people will just, when they will buy another, if it's an SUV or another car, they will always buy a, a part of this icon. There is always a, a little bit of this icon into all the other uh, body types. And I think that's key. There are some brands that are very successful doing that. We are not at that stage. But um, I totally share the, 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 what you were mentioning about uh, about how to play with your codes or to translate these codes into different products. 
Yeah, and I, if I can add, I think it's important there to have the conviction to stay with your answer. Because if you, you have to create the new icon. You have to create that icon to build the DNA. So once you have the icon, you can feed off that DNA, and that's, that's important. But that doesn't come without being persistent, always stretching to the goal, to your triangle. That's so important. And I think, yeah, you, you have to establish who the brand is and have a success, and then you can expand the brand. And I think there's lots of talk about dilution or expansion or evolution. Sometimes if you don't expand or evolve, the brand won't exist. Mm. So when people say, oh, why do you do this product? Because the market shifts. You know that when the market shifts, you, you have to follow them where the market is, where your customer is, where your potential customer is. So therefore, you evolve your brand to exist. And for us, for another 104 years, and, and for these guys to exist past the first car. Mm. In the case of Honda, it's a large company. Therefore, compared to Aston Martin and Alpine, as Mark mentioned, you need a parent. And Mark talked about when he went to Aston and there was Ford behind at that time. Compared to those times, Aston Martin is more independent a full independent company now since 07. And the analogy I used earlier on was we all have parents. At some point, you have to leave home. You still love your parents, but you kind of don't want to live with them anymore. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you hope you'll be successful outside of there, and they give you great knowledge, and they provide stability in your early years. And that's what Ford was for Aston Martin in the early noughties, I guess, until 2007. And now in independence, since 07, it becomes more difficult without a parent. But we have a 5% shareholding from Mercedes that allows us open door technology to the mm -hmm. two electrical systems. Or as you know, an AMG engine in the, in the new um, V8 version of DB11 and will be in Vantage as well. So that's critical to a small company and its survival. Um, but what the customer touches, feels, and sees, no one cares about an electrical system at the end of the day. It's just electrons moving along wires. As long as your graphic interface, your user interface, your touch points are different, then it doesn't really matter. Every, every cell phone has the same chip. I like this uh, analogy with the parents because we are probably younger. You're <laughs> probably a very young uh, company. <laughs> But uh, it's also the strength of a group because we try to develop an organization with the agility of a small team uh, within the design, but it's the same thing for, for the business unit. So we are, we, we are saying that we, are, we try to be as agile as the car with our organization. Uh, but the good thing is um, you have a strong group behind you, especially when you're in, the, in this early phase. So you have all the logistic. Um, our studio is, is within the, 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 the Renault design uh, studio, but we have a dedicated team, dedicated workshop, but we are full uh, support from the group. Uh, even in uh, human resources, we, can, uh, we have a small team, but we can expand the team uh, during uh, creation phase, and after we can go back to a very uh, core team to develop, so um, very helpful and helps to give confidence into, into the, the project. And, mm. and I think that's key because that, that's something you have to balance all the time. Um, in the governments, uh, how far you go uh, into your uh, freedom or how far the uh, Renault management is, is really uh, uh, tuning the decisions. So, but I think that's, that's part of the, it's, it's exactly a, a young man trying to to uh, take its independence, but always playing with the responsibi responsibilities with, uh, with uh, its parents. So I think that's a, that's a good analogy, and I, I will, I think, give me a lot of uh, ideas. <laughs> Just make sure you come home when they tell yeah. you to. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, just two or three more things before the end of the day. Firstly, thank you all very much for coming. It's been a very well attended event. Thank you very much to all of our presenters, uh, this team and all of the others who have presented, not to mention our lovely sponsors, without whom, etc., and all the backstage crew uh, who have done a fantastic job of making the event work. But there's one more thing in the tradition of uh, Apple announcements. Uh, could I ask Shiro to join me on stage for one moment? And Alfonso Albisa and Carl. <coughs> sure, as a, as a thank you for your enormous efforts in putting this together <laughs> and, uh, and over the years, I think Alfonso has something to say. Thank you. Do we have a hand, Mike? <laughs> Thank you. Well, Cheryl, um, where's Carl? Is Carl here? Where is he? <laughs> okay. So um, Carl came to me uh, a couple months ago, and we started thinking about uh, a little something for you. And uh, so we were brainstorming, because you're a man who, who has seen and done and maybe has almost everything uh, you would want. So we were thinking, OK, what, what can that be? So we, we, with Bose, we started uh, thinking about what kind of gift we can give you to thank you for all your, your years with, with, in the community of design. But then also, because one of the last things you did in, with us was the, the show car that we're going to show tomorrow, so we, uh, which was amazing that <laughs> Bose custom made wow. for you uh, a yeah. uh, speaker system that, that takes into account uh, the last project, literally the last day, I think you did the model freeze, and uh, here it is. I think that it's coming right now. Cole Price from well, Bose well, with a surprise. <laughs> with the gift itself. If anyone wants to look at this afterwards, you may have to fight Shiro for it. <laughs> you made it a little too well. <laughs> Am I pulling something? Oh. Hmm? Is there a speaker? Yeah. He's here, don't 
Thank you, Shira, for Thank all you, of your efforts. And, Thank you, uh, boss. <laughs> <laughs> and yep, thank you very much for, for coming. And anyway, let's have a portrait. Everybody smile. Marvelous. Uh, could you, if you haven't already, remember to fill in one of our feedback forms and drop it in outside. And we will see you next time. Thank you very much and good night. Yeah.